Sandra from Fit Kitchen Diva and lately I feel like I've been having a lot of clients coming to me um, with a lot of stress in their lives. So while we've been working on nutritional aspects of how to deal with stress, for example, we use a lot more of our B vitamins during times of either physical or mental stress. So really making sure you're consuming B vitamins, whether it be with food or supplementing. But I've also been trying to work with them on lifestyle aspects of dealing with stress. Um, and I'm not just a nutritionist, I'm also a fitness instructor and a yoga instructor. So today what I wanna do with you guys is help you manage that stress by my favorite way, yoga. This is gonna be a beginner's yoga class, 30 minutes, anybody can do it. So if you have a yoga mat, great, unroll that yoga mat. If not, even just placing a towel on the floor, finding a comfortable spot where you have enough space to lie out will be great. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna be on all fours. So the alignment we want to get on all fours is that our wrists are lined up underneath our shoulders and that our knees are lined up underneath our hips. Often I see people sitting back like this, but we want to get some strengthening through the shoulders. If you have any wrist problems and you can't be on fist on hands for very long, a couple of things to think about. One, are you putting all the weight to the heel of your hand? Think of opening your palm and putting weight to your fingers. If that's still hurt on your wrists, you can come to fists. That's another option as well. So we're coming to our cat cow, working on flexibility of the spine. So we start with the breath in. Think of a Halloween cat, an angry cat. They're gonna round through the spine, chin to the chest, tailbone under, really scoop the abdominals in. And then on your inhale, you're gonna drop the belly, lift the chin and the tailbone. So think like a cat, he's a bit of a sway back, right? Exhale, scoop and round, open the shoulder blades to your cat. Inhale, drop the belly, leaning down to your cow. So just flowing at your breath pace. So what we want is for our movements to follow our breath, not the other way around. So what that means, when you come to cat, if you come to your cat and you still have breath left to blow out, hold your cat pose till you've blown all that breath out. And as you come to cow pose, hold your cow pose till you can't take in any more air. And it's okay to hear yourself breathe during yoga. We want that, we all breathe. One more time each way. And last time to our cow pose. Coming back to your neutral spine, we're gonna sit back to our child's pose. So we're sitting the bum back to the heels and reaching the arms forward. This is gonna be an active child's pose. So that means we're not gonna let ourselves just drop now. We're gonna keep our elbows off the mat, really reaching the arms forward. Maybe you need to widen up your knees a little bit to make some space for deep belly breaths because we still want those deep belly breaths. Can you wiggle your fingers a little further along the mat, lengthening the arms, and then bringing the head down, relax the head down. So you want to feel the lengthening, so you can keep your head down, I'm lifting up to have a look at you, but you want to feel the lengthening through the sides of the waist, through the sides of the rib cage. I think for most of the day, we're kind of compressed through our spine. This is our chance to lengthen our spine. And one last deep inhale and exhale. And then we're going to come back again to all fours. So let's come back to that alignment. Knees under hips, abdominals tight. We want to watch that we're not sinking into our shoulders. So lift up out of those shoulders. Pull your belly button to your spine. Think like you're at the beach. Suck in that tummy, right? Okay, opposite arm, opposite leg. We're going to extend one leg and we're going to extend the opposite arm. And bringing it down. Extend. So we're alternating, and for this, you can go whatever pace you want. So some people come to yoga with the thought of slowing down. And today's yoga practice is a beginner practice. We're not doing anything too crazy. We're not doing shoulder stands. We're not doing crow pose. So today, maybe we're focusing on a nice slow practice, and that's what you're looking to get out of it. Or maybe you're looking to build a bit of energy. Maybe then you want to alternate this at a faster pace. 
Think long arm, long leg. Imagine like you're reaching the thigh bone away from the hip joint. And this next side that we lift, we're going to hold. So abdominals tight. Imagine like somebody's pulling one arm and pulling the opposite leg. They're keeping you long. And your head should be looking to your mat from tailbone to the tip of the head, nice and long. And it's okay if you're wobbling a little. And then we're gonna bring that hand and knee down and same to the other side. Reach, extend, hold, breathe. Long breaths, tight abdominals. And bringing it down. We're gonna again come to child's pose, sitting the bum back to the heels. Widen up the knees, reach the arms forward, and this time let's come to a relaxed child's pose. So just let yourself go. Your head is relaxed. Your arms can either be in front here, or some people like to bring them behind. If when you come to child's pose, here's a few modifications. Some people in child's pose, to get their head to the mat, their bum is going to come up like this. That's putting a lot of pressure on the spine. So you could, and if you have a block or a pillow, put it there to have your head higher. You could stack your fists to make support for your head. So those are options for if you're the person whose bum comes up. If you have knee problems, you could take a rolled up towel and put it behind the knees and that will just prevent the knee from getting fully flexed down. Okay, so we're gonna come out of our child's pose and come to standing. So if you are great with yoga, you're welcome to do a downward dog to come to standing. Otherwise, any way that you can, come join me in standing. Okay, so we've come to a standing position. And whatever we're standing is called our mountain pose. So we want to think about the weight of our feet. And often people tend to stand with either the weight of the feet rolled in a little bit or maybe rolled out. I know I tend to roll in. So first think about equalizing the weight through your feet and think about spreading the toes apart, right? Think of a mountain, that's our base of support. We want that nice strong base. Knees are slightly soft, our core is tight. From the pelvic floor all the way up, core muscles are working, shoulders are back and down. This is our mountain pose. So take a couple of breaths in your mountain pose. And then from our mountain pose on your next exhale, you're going to soften your knees. One vertebrae at a time, begin to roll yourself down. So think of each vertebrae releasing down. Knees are soft. And again, to wherever you come, there's no right or wrong. So wherever your down is, head is relaxed, let the neck go. Maybe you need to give it a little bit of a shake. Feel how your breaths are deeper into the back of the rib cage again. Feel the sides of the ribs expand. On your next exhale, bend the knees further and roll yourself up. One vertebrae at a time. And then shoulders roll back. And let's just inhale to roll the shoulders up. Exhale, roll back. Inhale up. Exhale, roll back, hold them back, clasp the hands together, and we're just gonna lift them up off the bum a little bit, opening through the chest. And this is if you tend to sit at a desk throughout the day or in a car, anything where you're sitting and rounding forward, this is a great stretch to do. Let's keep our hands together as we fold forward, raising the arms up with us, and then relax the head again. Try to take those arms right up, head is relaxed. Again, think like a rag doll with the head. And then we're going to release the arms down and just sway a little bit side to side. Ugh, my necklace has just gone in my mouth. <laughs> there we go. Sway a little bit side to side, relax in the lower back. And come to center. Knees are soft. On your next exhale, stack each vertebrae on top of the one below as you roll yourself all the way up. Shoulders roll back and down, ear to one shoulder. And we want to watch that we're not tensing the shoulder up to the ear. Your ear comes to that shoulder. Close your eyes. Feel the lengthening of the neck. And let's turn our chin to that same shoulder, like you're trying to look to that shoulder. 
Or I always think of this, you know in the winter when you see a duck outside, how it tucks its beak into its wing? That's what you're doing right now, tucking your beak into your wing. And let's roll down to our chest. Head comes back up. Ear comes to the other shoulder. And now we'll bring our chin to that same shoulder. And roll your chin down to your chest. Rolling the head back up. We're going to do a little bit of balance work in what we call our tree pose. So our foot, again, think of spreading the toes apart. Think of the weight of your foot like a triangle from the heel to the ball of the foot and across. And we want that weight to be equal. When we're balancing, it's really important that we have a focal point. That makes a huge difference, focusing the eyes on something. So a beginner tree pose, we would have actually our big toe of the opposite foot down. Or you could even come and, and hold on. I've got a treadmill arm here that I could hold on to if I feel like I need something for support. So that's an option as well. And then as you get better in balance, you can start to bring your hand away. Um, so you, barefoot, right? Ideally we're in yoga for barefoot. I don't think I said that. Did I just say we're in yoga for barefoot? Ideally, we're in barefoot for yoga. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna find, like I said, our base of support. Your big toe is option one. Bringing the foot to the calf, or even you can use your hand to bring it up higher is option two. Arms out for balance. As you become more confident in balance, you can bring the hands to heart level. Look at me, I'm about to wobble over. As you become more confident, you can bring the arms up overhead as well. Keep your eyes on that focal point and remember to breathe. Here I go, I'm about to fall over. Remember to breathe. People often forget to breathe. They're concentrating so hard on balance. Nice and controlled, we bring the arms to heart level. We bring the knee forward and we release that leg down. I like to give everything a little bit of a shake out in between, kind of recenter, rebalance, refine that focal point. And let's try our other side. So beginner, you have your big toe on the ground. The knee is open, no matter which option you're at. A lower foot will be easier to balance. Hands to heart level as you feel confident. Arms up overhead is another option. If you have neck problems and tend to create a lot of tension through the neck, you can come to cactus pose. So in cactus pose, our arms are like cactus arms out to the side. And remember, breathe. Inhale, and exhale. One more big breath in and out. And now we're going to bring the arms to heart level, bring the knee to the center, and release everything down. And give everything a little bit of a shake out to rebalance yourself. So coming again to our um, our mountain stance. We're going to have nice tight abdominals. We inhale our arms to shoulder height. Exhale, think of hinging forward from the hips. And we're coming just about halfway. Hinge from the hips and now squeeze your shoulder blades together. Think of airplane arms. From your tailbone to the tip of the head, a nice long spine. So that means we're not looking up. We're not letting our head drop down like we've given up. Head is slightly above heart level. And now let's do little circles from our shoulders. Strengthening through the back of the shoulders will help with posture. We're less likely to slump and slouch. And the better our posture, the less likely to have back problems. Let's circle the other way. And relax down again to your rag doll. From here, you're going to bend your knees until you can bring your hands to the floor and step back again to all fours. And then we're going to come down onto our stomach. So we've come down onto our stomach. Our elbows are underneath our shoulders. And we're in what we call our baby cobra or our sphinx pose. And this is a great pose, again, for people who are sitting throughout the day. It helps open through the abdominal muscles. It gives the spine a nice extension. Close your eyes and just notice where you feel this through your spine. Do you have any tender points? If this is too much of an extension for you, widening up your arms like this 
will give you an even more baby cobra. So that's another option is wider arms like that. And that's for people who maybe have some back problems where extension isn't good for them. And now from here, we're going to lower ourselves all the way down to our stomach. Arms come behind us. And I want you to tighten your abdominals as if you're pulling your belly button away from your mat. On your exhale, raise the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades in, and then inhale to come back down. Exhale, lift and lengthen the spine. Inhaling down and keeping your feet on the mat. What we want to be doing here is strengthening the muscles of the spine. And as soon as we lift our feet, our glutes, our bum muscles, right? They're, they're big and strong. They take over. So we want the muscles that run along the spine. It's like a rope on either side of the spine. Squeeze those shoulder blades in each time. Keep your neck long. Hopefully next time I do a yoga video, it'll be warm enough to be doing it outside. That's my plan. Or even just any video, I hope to be outside. This next time that we lift, we're gonna hold, and now we're gonna lift our legs as well. This is our locust pose. Apparently this looks like a locust, I guess. Shoulder blades are squeezing in, arms are up, feet are up off the mat. And then you're gonna relax it all down. Turn your cheek to one side. Notice how the neck feels. Give the body a little bit of a shake just to relax it out. Let's bend one leg, and you're gonna reach for your ankle. If you have really tight quadriceps, you might not be able to reach that ankle. Maybe then, if you have a pant, you can pull your pant leg or a sock. Otherwise, you need to grab a yoga strap or even a bathroom sash. That would work, a bathroom sash. So feeling the stretch through the front of the thigh, the quadriceps. This is feeling really good to me right now, so we might just be here a little while. <laughs> it's, it's all about me, you know, I'm liking this stretch. And then we'll switch to the other side. Turn your cheek to the other side as well. First notice how it feels different. Is it different from one side of the neck to the other? And then relax the head, grab that ankle. And you should be feeling this through the front of the thigh. If you have any knee problems and this is too much compression of the knee, and maybe you want to have some kind of a rope around your ankle and you're pulling it without fully compressing the knee. And we're going to release, bring your hands underneath your shoulders, and you're going to use them to press yourself back to child's pose one more time. So arms can be in front, arms can be behind, shoulder blades are relaxed. So relaxing into your child's pose. I had said this was going to be a 30 minute video and I didn't really check the time, but I'm thinking we're about there because I want to give you that all important savasana. As I said, that's always at the end of any yoga. We want to take a few minutes for that as well. Okay, so let's come to lying on our back for Savasana. So for Savasana, you want to be comfortable, you want to be warm. So maybe you even want to grab a blanket or put your socks back on, your sweater back on. Typically, Savasana, you're lying on your back. It's called a corpse pose with your palms facing up to the ceiling. So a typical savasana is this. Palms are facing up to the ceiling, legs are relaxed, eyes are closed. But modify it however you need to. So if you need to put a pillow underneath your knees, if that feels better to your back, or some people like to lie on their side, anything where your muscles can fully relax. So I'm just gonna leave you lying here in your savasana, and I will just verbally guide you through a relaxation, a visualization to finish off your beginner yoga practice. Thank you very much and let me know how you liked it and if you would like to see more videos, I got really good response to my last core workout video so I'm guessing people maybe want a little bit more of this um, or if you want a more advanced class I can give that as well so let me know. So you're going to continue on into your savasana, just listening to my voice as I guide you through, taking you to a wonderful place with this. You are lying comfortably, eyes closed, breaths slow and deep. 
Imagine yourself lying on the white sands of a beautiful tropical beach. The sun is beginning its descent for the evening and is casting a warm golden glow over the sand and the water. The sand is still warm from the heat of the day and you can feel this heat release the tension in your muscles. Your muscles begin to melt into the sand. They become so relaxed. There is a gentle tropical breeze blowing. You feel this breeze caress your face and hands. You hear the waves coming to shore and then ebbing away again. And your breath takes on the rhythm of these waves. Overhead, you hear the palm trees swaying in the wind and the melody of the birds in the distance. The tropical vegetation surrounding you is filled with blooming flowers in vibrant reds, gorgeous yellows, and deep purples. You smell the sweetness of these flowers and inhale deeply. Feel yourself relax with each breath you take. Take a few moments to enjoy this feeling of relaxation. <laughs>